Unit 5, Lesson 2, Using Diagrams to Represent Addition and Subtraction. Number 1. Use the given key to answer the questions. A. What number does this diagram represent? It has two squares that represent one hundredth each, so that would be two hundredths, and it has five dashes that each represent one thousandths. So two hundredths plus five thousandths equals twenty-five thousandths. B. Draw a diagram that represents two hundred sixteen thousandths. I've drawn two of the longer shapes that represent one-tenth each, so that would be two-tenths. I've drawn one of the square shapes that represents one-hundredth, and I've drawn six of the dashes. Each of those dashes represents one-thousandths. The six of them equal six-thousandths. Together, all these shapes represent two-hundred-sixteen-thousandths. C. Draw a diagram that represents three-hundred-four-thousandths. So here I drew three of the longer shapes and four of the dashes to represent 304 thousandths. Number two, here are diagrams that represent 137 thousandths and 284 thousandths. A. Use the diagram to find the value of 137 thousandths added to 284 thousandths. Explain your reasoning. Since there were 11 squares underneath the hundredth section, I bundled up 10 of them and traded them in for one of the longer shapes underneath the tenths section, leaving me with just one square left in the hundredth section. In the thousandths section, I bundled up 10 of them and traded them in for another square in the hundredth section. So now there's two squares in the hundredth section. I have 421 thousandths. 7 plus 4 is 11, carry the 1. 1 plus 3 plus 8 is 12, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 4. The total is 421 thousandths. C. How was your reasoning in the first two questions different? How was it similar or the same? In both situations, we grouped and traded sets of 10 for sets of 1 with the same value, similar to trading 10 pennies for 1 dime. 2A was more visual, and 2B was faster. Number 3. For the first two problems, circle the vertical calculation where digits of the same kind are lined up. Then, finish the calculation and find the sum. For the last two problems, find the sum using vertical calculation. A. 3 and 25 hundredths plus 1. I circled the middle one because the decimals were lined up. B. 5 tenths plus 1 and 15 hundredths. I circled the first one because the decimals were also lined up. 3 and 25 hundredths plus 1 equals 4 and 25 hundredths. 5 tenths plus 1 and 15 hundredths equals 1 and 65 hundredths. For the last two problems, find the sum using vertical calculation. 10 and 6 tenths plus 1 and 7 tenths. I line up the decimal and then add 6 plus 7 equals 13, carry the 1, 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 2, and I bring down the 1. 10 and 6 tenths plus 1 and 7 tenths equals 12 and 3 tenths. D, 123 plus 2 tenths. I line up the decimals, I bring down the 2, 3 plus 0 equals 3, I bring down the 2, and I bring down the 1. 123 plus 2 tenths equals 123 and 2 tenths. Number 4. Andre has been practicing his math facts. He can now complete 135 multiplication facts in 90 seconds. A. If Andre is answering questions at a constant rate, how many facts can he answer per second? 135 divided by 90 equals 1 and 5 tenths or 1 and a half. It takes Andre one and a half seconds to answer one fact. B. Noah also works at a constant rate and he can complete 75 facts in one minute. Who is working faster? Explain or show your reasoning. One minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So to stay consistent with problem A, I'm going to change one minute to 60 seconds. 75 facts divided by 60 seconds 
equals 1 and 25 hundredths, or 1 and 1 fourth second. It takes Noah 1 and 1 fourth second to answer one fact. Andre is actually faster because he's answering 1 and a half per second, and Noah's only answering 1 and a quarter per second. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 5 Lesson 2, using diagrams to represent addition and subtraction.